Hello and welcome back to the last part of our character creator tutorial. So um, by now, like I say, I'm sure you've done something a lot more sophisticated than this. But let's have a look at the final step, um, which for me is saving and loading our character. Now, if we just stop here, Uma comes with several different ways of saving a character. Um, I think if we go up to the Uma menu and have a look, you'll see we've got this load and save and we can save um, a text asset, we can save an asset asset, um, then we've got our dynamic character avatar, and all of these options. Uh, yeah, a little bit confusing up here. What we've also got, if we look at our character, um, let's just collapse some of this stuff, you'll see there's some load save options here. Uh, if we open this up, um, there's this load path type, and different things in here and the save path type um, if you play with these they are pretty useful however they're all about loading and saving while you're in the editor they're not an awful lot of use while we are at runtime um, there's several different ways you can approach this but me being me I'm going to try and show you the simplest way possible to actually load and save your character so I'm not going to look at this and I'm also not going to look at this we're actually going to do this in code um, and all of this will boil down to approximately four lines so there's not an awful lot to it um, the key thing is one of the easiest ways to save the entire definition of your character is to output it as a string so let's have a little look at that so let's go back into our character creator script and I'm going to add um, a new string to it so we'll call this string Again, you don't have to expose this, but um, I'm going to. So let's call this public string, and let's call this my recipe. Eh? There we go, my recipe. So we now, when we save, let's just have a little look. In here, we should see my recipe appear at the bottom once this is compiled. Right, there it is. So we are going to write a very quick routine to retrieve my recipe um, so down here let's head to the bottom and uh, what you'll also notice if you look I've actually um, commented out these uh, debug logs that we put in just to stop some of the, the spam in our console so down here let's write a quick routine we'll call this void in fact let's make it a public void so we can actually get to it so public void save uh, let's call it save recipe yep okay and that's a start for it um, and let's actually put some boilerplate in for public void let's call this load recipe okay right so we're ready to go um, so the first thing I want to do I want this save recipe to simply collect our character turn it into a string and assign it to this my recipe string here so this should be quite easy we'll say my recipe equals um, avatar dot get current recipe would you believe very complicated um, so we've now got that routine let's just save that and we need a way of firing this so if I head back into my scene and I'm going to go to the canvas I'm going to add um, another button and let's pop that up here again just a little bit of arrangement here I'm going to make sure it's top left and I'm going to change the text on this button to let's call this save Again, lots of surprises in this uh, this particular episode aren't they so in this save button we will go to its um, on click event and we're going to add our character pick our character creator and look for save recipe okay that's great we've now got a button to actually fire off our saving let's just uh, run this and see what happens so I'm going to select the character let's keep our eye on this recipe string and hit save and what that's done that's taken our character and defined everything about it in this recipe um, let's just have a quick look at that I'm going to select it and copy so I've got a copy of that string now let's head over into a text editor okay and let's paste that in there 
and this is it this string is everything about our character it's actually packed as a JSON um, so you can head over to an online JSON formatter to make it a little bit more readable but the idea is you can see in here if you if you look through it we've got human male DCS so there's the race um, what else have we got in here we've got this is all the DNA so the height feet size arm width and all the values that go with it um, you can see our shared colors are actually stored in there um, and you can also see um, the different slots that we actually have in there the wardrobe slots uh, so at the moment we've only got male shorts and it also has um, the actual animator so this definition if we reuse this would rebuild our Uma in its entirety okay so you could do anything you like with that you could store that in a database you could save that out to a text file um, you could store that in a persistent object so that when you load the next scene you that string is available to you um, we're going to have a little mess about with the file system and actually save this onto disk and load it back in so let's do that so we've now got let's not save we've now got a routine to actually um, to save that string let's just pop a little line of code in this load one to actually load a character from that string and it's pretty easy it's almost exactly opposite of what we've just done so I'm going to say um, avatar dot load from string let's have a little look that load from recipe string and we will give it my recipe so now we've got that we need to go back to our scene and create a button to actually fire that off so let's duplicate our save button move it over and let's change the text so we'll pop load in here and we'll just change the on click event so instead of firing off save recipe that fires off load recipe brilliant okay so what this should do if I hit play if I change my avatar I should still have my string in my buffer so let's have a little look let's go back to the character and let's right click and paste there we go there's my recipe so if I hit load it should load that string up and bring my character back and there we go simple as that there is one small thing that you need to be aware of so let's um, let's change this mail so we can reload again so let's make a big belly on him darker skin and let's put a slot on there okay so there is actually a, a wardrobe slot attached if I load you'll see that wardrobe slot still remains so when you're loading a new recipe if it has slots in it um, they will be loaded but it won't clear any existing slots if they aren't in the recipe so just to be safe we're going to quickly go back into our character creator and on load before we load we're going to say avatar dot clear now you saw before we had clear slot to specifically clear a certain wardrobe slot there is also this lovely clear slots which will empty every last one of them so let's try that one more time okay so again let's change our dude let's add a nice obvious slot when we hit load it should oh let's paste our recipe into here mustn't forget that when we hit load it should clear all of the slots and load our character up that's brilliant okay so that's how we save and load characters let's just take this a little bit further and use the file system to actually save this to disk somewhere so let's head back into our character creator very quickly um, head up to the top and we're going to include using system.io just to give us access to the file system and down here rather than me having to cut and paste into my recipe here what we'll do we'll save this out and put it somewhere safe so I'm going to use a file dot write all text okay and in here we need a path um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to write this to application application dot persistent data path if you don't know what that is 
Um, this is simply a folder somewhere on your computer. Um, it's actually in local. We can, we can find that out by debug logging it. But this folder will always exist no matter what device you're on. Um, particularly if you're compiling for Android or for iOS, they do not like you to mess around with the file system. However, this persistent data path is always free for you to read and write from. So it's a different location on different machines, but it's always open when you compile. Again, if you're sticking to Windows, feel free to put this wherever you want. But I'm going to go to that persistent data path, and I'm going to give myself a file name. Um, we've got to have the slash on the end, because that the last thing on the persistent data path is the name of a folder. And I'm going to call this dude.txt. Okay, so with that, we'll store my recipe in a file in the persistent data path. So equally, before we carry on, um, I need to do the same thing in this load recipe. So again, before I do anything, I'm going to say my recipe equals file dot read all text. And again, I'm going to take that from exactly the same path. And let's pop that in there. There we go. So this will read my character that has been created. And as soon as I save, you can see I've made a mistake here. And this is the write all text. I'm telling it what file to write, but I'm not telling it what text to actually write in it. So silly me. Let's put my recipe in there. That's it. So I'm actually telling it to write the my recipe string into this file. Okay, let's just save again. No more stupid errors. Wonderful. So this should work without me having to copy and paste from this my recipe field. So let's hit start. And let's create uh, a character a little bit taller. Let's have some darker skin. Let's put some hair over on. Yep, that looks good. I'm going to save. So that has created this and saved it to disk. So let's go back to a mail. Um, in fact, let's stop and restart. So we know there's nothing buffered here. If I hit load, that's loaded our character back. So there you go. It's pretty straightforward. Not an awful lot of code to do that. Um, like I say, you don't need to use the file system if you want to create uh, an online game or uh, something multiplayer. You can send this string to an online database or you can, um, if it's something that you want to work live rather than saving out to a file, you can put that in a persistent object somewhere in here. And when you load the next scene up, that object is read to actually give your character's appearance. Lots and lots of different ways to use this, but it's really quite simple. Um, now, the one possible concern that you've got is that string is quite long. So again, for multiplayer, you maybe look at doing something a bit more efficient, but uh, that is the easiest way to get going, loading and saving characters. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful, and I will see you next time. And once again, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible. Uh, if you would like to support me, feel free to click that link at the end of the video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.